Hi, I'm Mark and I'm bringing this morning's reflection, which is on part of Matthew chapter 5, when Jesus is teaching on what the kingdom of heaven is going to be like. And starting in verse 14 and reading to verse 30. For it will be as when a man going on a journey called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he who had two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He who had received the one talent came forward and saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not winnow. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant. You knew I that I reap where I have not sowed and gather where I have not winnowed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to him who has ten talents. For to every one who has will more be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away and cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. There men will weep and gnash their teeth. Now, the parable of the talents is a fairly well-known story. And my thought today is perhaps focusing not on the usual focus, which is on the, ta the servant who has the one talent and what could or should that servant had done with it, but rather to think more of the servants with the five talents and the two talents, because the servant with the five talents takes the money and invests it, he trades with it, as the Bible says, and he generates five more, the same again, and his master is pleased with him. The second servant has a smaller amount of money, but does exactly the same with it. He effectively doubles it. And the response of the master is the interesting bit here. It's not, well, you could have made more from it. It is, you have been faithful. So it is not necessarily what we do with it that matters. It is how we react to what God has given us in the first place. So are we going to use what God has given us and use it in a way that is honouring to him and brings glory to his name? So rather than comparing the five talents and the two talents given or brought back to the master when it was ten talents and four talents, it is the attitude of the servant which says, well, I have been given gifts let me use them in a way that is honouring. And the outcome of that honouring use of the gifts 
becomes a little bit secondary almost. It is God has given to those servants what he has selected to give them. And they have gone off and made maximum use of those gifts, whatever they may be. And that is the thought that has occurred to me thinking about this passage. It's not five talents or two talents. That is within God's domain, within the domain of the spirit, to gift to us what he will. And our job is to use those gifts, those talents, whatever they may be, in the way that most honours God. And as we seek to honour God with the use of the gifts and the talents, then we get back the praise of the Lord because we have sought to honour him. And that, I think, is the important thing here, because I've heard some teaching about sort of the relative merits of the five talents or the two talents. And I'm thinking that isn't really where the message should be here that God will give us gifts and abilities. God e gives each of us very different gifts and abilities. Each gift he gives, each talent he bestows, is important to us for what he wants us to do with it. Mm. Each of us is unique. We have our unique set of gifts and abilities because he has a unique set of roles and responsibilities for each of us to take on. And so with our unique set of talents that he's given us, the life that he has set before us, can we live that life in the way that is most honouring to him, using the talents he's given us to the maximum in the way that most pleases him, is most honouring to God and therefore brings him most glory and allows him to praise us for using what he has given us, whatever that may be. So as he calls us, we need to respond and use the talents that he has set in our lives. And the song I'd like to link to this is that wonderful old hymn, Amazing Grace picking up on the idea of grace because it's grace through which God gives his talents and gifts to us. It is his grace which we are given freely and therefore we are empowered to use those in the way that is honouring to him.